Arithmetic operators in Python are used to perform mathematical operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And we're going to cover some others as well. They are really straightforward and they're very similar to what you learned in basic math. So with the addition operator, you're basically going to be adding two operands. So if we go ahead and we summon the print function and we ask it to add four plus two, four and two are the operands and we'll be printing the answer to this, which will hopefully be six. So if we run this, you will see that in fact we get six. Now we can also create some variables. So for instance, we can say that A equals 42 and B equals 58. And then we can simply print A plus B. And if we run that, you'll see that you'll get 100. Quite simple, right? By the way, in the last tutorial, I covered strings. So I do want to mention that using the plus sign, we can actually do something called concatenation. So if I assign the variable A to the string promo and then assign the variable B to the string ambitions, you will see that we can actually add these two strings together. And if I go ahead and run this, you'll see that it says promo ambitions. Now notice there are no spaces in between. If I wanted a space in between, I would simply use single quotes or double quotes and leave a space in between. And then I would again use the plus sign and then I'll run the program and you see that now there's a space between promo and ambitions. Here's something really interesting for you to know, which has to do with syntax when using concatenation or adding things. So if I just run A and B side by side, you'll see that there is an error. It says invalid syntax. Perhaps you forgot a comma. Now, actually, what I forgot is that I cannot add two string variables together. I can only add string literals. So if I actually went ahead and typed it out, so for instance, the string literal promo, and then just left a space here and wrote ambitions. See they're side by side, there's no plus sign. If I go ahead and I run that, you'll see that it'll actually concatenate it. So it'll be the same thing as having a plus sign here. Just a little tip for syntax when you're working with string literals, not string variables. So now let's look at the subtraction operator in Python. It is basically the minus sign or the dash or the negative sign and that denotes subtraction. So it basically subtracts the second operand from the first. So if A equals 100, B equals 65 and we print A minus B, it's going to subtract 65 from 100. And the result, if we run it, is 35 as you could see right here. So let's now talk about the multiplication operator, which is just the asterisk sign. Now, if you wanted to multiply two operands, simply we assign two values to two variables. So A equals six, B equals eight. And if we go ahead and we multiply A by B using the asterisk sign right here, which is the operator for multiplication, we'll go ahead, we'll run this and you'll see that we get 48. So if you wanted to mess around with exponents in Python, you need to use the operator two asterisk signs next to one another. This is going to return the first operand raised to the power of the second operand. So over here, you see that we assigned two values once again to the variables A and B. The first is the number three and the second is the number four. So if we print A, raised to the power of B with two asterisk signs, you're gonna see that three to the power of four, so let's see, three times three is nine, nine times three is 27, and then 27 times three is 81, I believe. So if I go ahead and I run this, you'll see that we actually get 81 right here. So that's how you use exponents. So if you wanted to divide something, you would use the forward slash as the operator for division, which basically divides the first operand by the second. And so over here, again, I assigned values to the variables A and B. So A equals three, B equals four. And if we wanted to divide three by four, we would print A forward slash B. I'll go ahead and run it and you'll see that we get 0.75. This is very important to note that when you are dividing, the answer will always be a float. 
and I will cover integers versus floats in a separate tutorial, but it's something that's really important to remember and it'll make a lot more sense down the line. So if you know basic math, you're probably really familiar with the ones that we covered thus far. However, one that you might not be as familiar with is the modulus operator denoted by the symbol percentage sign. And what that does is it returns the remainder when the first operand is divided by the second. So what do I mean by that? Let me show you. So I have two variables here, a and b. I assign the value 17 to a and I assign the value 5 to b. Now if I go ahead and I divide 17 by 5, I'm going to get 3 point something 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 right? Because 5 goes into 17 three times and then there's a remain there. So instead of giving me the 3 point something something, it's just going to tell me the number that the remainder is. So in this case, 17 divided by 5, 5 goes into 17 three times. So 5 times 3 is 15 and there's 2 left over. So it's just going to tell me 2. So basically it's going to put 5 into 17 as many times as it can, which is 3, 15, and then we're gonna subtract 17 from 15 and we get two. So if I go ahead and I print A percent sign B and I run it, you're gonna see that we get two. Now let me show you a real life example. For instance, you're programming a system that needs to perform an action only on even numbered days of the month. So here's how we might use the modulus operator in that case. So we'll start by assigning a value or the day of the month to day. So in this case, I'm gonna say the 16th. And here I'm going to check if the day is even. So what I did here is I wrote a little program. So as you can see in this example, day percent symbol two calculates the remainder of day divided by two. For even days like 16, 18, 20, 22, etc., the remainder will always be zero, right? Because there's nothing left over. For odd days like 15, 17, 19, etc., the remainder will be one. So by checking if day percentage symbol two equals zero, you can determine if the day is even and then execute appropriate actions based on that. And which actions am I talking about? Well, it's simply printing today's an even day of the month or it's an odd day of the month. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Let's try to print it with the value being 16. I'll go ahead and I'll run the program. I'll open up the terminal and you see that it says today's an even day of the month. Okay, well, let me change this to the 17th and see what happens when I run this program. And now it says it's an odd day of the month today. So I wanted to do this example so you kind of understand why the heck anybody would use a modulus operator in the first place. Okay, so the last operator in Python that we're gonna discuss is the floor division operator. And that's designated with the symbol two forward slashes next to one another, as you see right here. So what that does is that divides the first operand by the second and returns the largest integer less than or equal to the result. So let me explain that and that was in a boring way and then we'll do it in a way that actually applies to real life. So let's take a look here. A is equal to 17 and then we assign the variable B with the value five. And so if we go ahead and we print A forward slash forward slash b so what that's going to do is that's going to give us the integer so basically the number of times that 5 goes into 17 without having a remainder so that is going to be 3 right because 5 goes into 17 three times so basically think of it this way how many times can you fit 5 into 17 and the obvious answer is 3 which equals 15 you can't do it four times because that's 20 which is greater than 17. And so since the answer is three, if we go ahead and we print a forward slash forward slash b, and we run this program, you will see that in fact, it does show us three. Now let me give you a real life example of this. You wanna find out how many people you can spread among a number of groups that you have. Now you want the same amount of people in each group 
However, you can't use fractions of people. So here's what I mean by that. If we divide total people by the total number of groups, we can't put 11.11111111 people in a group because you can't have 11 one hundredths of a person. That's ridiculous, right? You're not going to chop people up. But if you want to make sure that the groups are going to be even, and that there are not going to be any fractions of people, we can actually create a little program for that. Let me show you how. So what I can do is I can make the variable people per group equal to the total amount of people and then perform floor division on the number of groups. So what that is going to do, it's going to find how many times nine goes into a hundred and just give us that integer number. And it's not going to give us any type of decimal point or fraction afterwards. So take a look. If I go over here and I summon the print function and I tell it to go ahead and print the variable people per group. And then I run this program, you're going to see that it just produces 11. There is no fraction afterwards, and this worked out perfectly. Now, if I have a different scenario, and let's say I have 123 total people, well, I could simply run it again, and now it tells me that 9 goes into 123, a total of 13 times, and then there's some remainder probably, but it's not going to list that. It's just going to tell you if you want the same exact number in each group and there's nine groups and you have 123 people, you can only put 13 people in each group. I hope that's helpful because it's a real life example. We're not just talking about nonsense lingo from some Python book. I'm showing you real life examples of how you would use this to program certain things. The last thing I want to explain and elaborate on is the precedence of arithmetic operators in Python. So operator precedence determines the order in which operations are performed in an expression, especially when multiple operators are present. So for instance, when you see this, the Python interpreter is not just going to digest this left to right. It's not going to do 3 plus 5 and then take 8 and multiply that by 2, which is 16 to the power of two. Instead, it's gonna first do the exponentiation of two, asterisk, asterisk two, right? So two to the power of two, which is four. Next, it's gonna multiply five times this, which is four. And then finally, it's gonna add the three. So there is precedence of arithmetic operators, just like regular math, which I recommend you look up. Like when you're punching things into a calculator, you have to watch out for the same thing. Now, there's a way around this, and that's with parentheses, because operations enclosed in parentheses are performed first. And so this can be used to change the natural precedence order. So take a look here. If I actually wanted to add 3 plus 5 first, I can simply put in parentheses, do 3 plus 5 first, and then afterwards, I want you to multiply that by 2, and only then should you do to the power of 2. So let's see if I'm correct. So 3 plus 5, that would be 8, and then we're going to multiply that by 2, that'll be 16, and 16 to the power of 2, so 16 times 16, if I run this, is 256. Just to show you that I'm not talking dribble, if I go over here and I remove all of the parentheses signs, so I removed absolutely all of them, you'll see that if I clear this and then I run it again, it will not be 256. So watch this. If I go ahead and run it, now it's showing us 23. Drastic difference. And that difference occurred because of the precedence of arithmetic operators. I appreciate you guys for watching this video in its entirety. If you don't know, I'm the owner of Promo Ambitions LLC. It's a web design and web development firm in North Jersey. And I do a lot with AI. It's actually what motivated me to go ahead and relearn every single part of Python. And so you're going to see a lot of tutorials drop on this channel. I present a lot in AI and my YouTube channel. I've dedicated for the past year to AI tutorials, but I'm definitely going to sprinkle in a bunch of Python tutorials like this as well. So if I've helped you in any way, please help me out. 
please subscribe to the channel. I have goals by the end of this year as far as how many subscribers I want to have on YouTube. And obviously, if you're into the dance stuff and you follow this channel, you know that I'm insanely passionate about dance. So make sure to give the Instagram a follow as well. You can message me. You could DM me on Instagram. You can write me through my website. I'll respond to every single person that posts anything in the comment section of this video. And I will aim to see all of you in the next video.